In today's video analysis, we're going to be taking a look at Mora Toglu's ground strokes. Uh, I'm a huge fan of this guy, and I'm going to actually show you today how his strokes are pretty good, and they're solid, and the technique is something that you could model yourself. I bet you thought that I was going to make fun of his strokes in this video. Well, that is not the case, and he is an amazing coach. Now, let's begin with the forehand side. So the first thing that Moritoglu does an excellent job of is making a unit turn, okay? If it's good enough for him, it's probably good enough for you as well. Now, notice how as the ball has bounced, he is letting go of the racket head. Now, in this phase of the stroke, players who don't really know what they're doing will just send the arm back by itself. But what he does, and every good tennis player does, is either have the hand follow along with the racket, that's what he does, or some players will essentially hold on to the racket's throat until it's time to go. And he has completed his turn as the ball has bounced. Now, his elbow position is also great. It's not tucked away playing hide and seek. And the racket is also on the outside of his body. So he doesn't have a leak. And also notice how the racket head is in front of the hand and it is slightly hooded. This is going to help generate topspin and have the racket come last. As we're going to see now, as he initiates the forward swing, he gets the racket to free fall and to pat the dog, but it's a setup at the height of the ball and basically dropping to the height of the ball and going through, right? We don't have to get way under the ball in modern tennis. It's a low to high myth is what I call it. I've gotten a lot of backlash, but the swing is really more through the ball. As we can see, he has uncoiled with the legs and the torso and the rackets, the last moving part, and now his butt cap is pointing towards the court. But it's a byproduct of the arm being loose and along for the ride. And now we're going to see contact point and relaxation. Okay, he finishes whatever around his shoulder, but pretty solid overall. Now let's go look at another forehand. Again, we can see the unit turn. Very, very nice. Racket staying on the outside of the body. Okay, right? Watch how it doesn't pass behind his back pocket. Okay? Boom. It's essentially perfect. A little bit more of a clear angle now, and this is what I'm always telling my students about the unit turn. Watch how long the racket is going to stay in front of the torso in the unit turn, and also how we're going to have this delay where the racket head stays in front of the hand, slightly hooded, and what I refer to as the double lag in modern tennis. So. We don't just have a lag when the forward swing starts, but see how his racket's inverted. He's keeping it in front of his body to store energy. So we have the lag in the preparation phase. Boom, right there. And then when the ball bounces, it's time to go. We're going to throw the body first. Notice how he's going with the legs, the hips, the shoulders, and the racket comes through as the last moving part and the wrist falls back into this position. Naturally, the wrist is along for the ride, right? And uh, as far as the racket drop, right, the pat the dog to the height of the ball, everyone gets a different degree of pat. It's gonna look different for everyone. His racket just happens to look like that because of his grip. So, uh, you know, yours might be different depending on the grip that you have. And then, boom, okay. And we've got the windshield wiper finish and we're not too worried about the follow through. It's really just a byproduct of all the great things that we've done and uh, personal preference. Now let's take a look at the backhand side. Now, I really like his backhand. Um, technically, it's sound and he hits a lot of the checkpoints that most people don't get themselves. So notice how in the setup, he's made a full unit turn. We've got the front shoulder underneath the chin. We've got the front elbow bent and close by and the hands have essentially stayed in front of the torso he has turned his upper body more than the legs 
and he is sideways on a skateboard, and boom. This is the one-handed backhand power position that almost no one gets. It's an indication that you've turned enough, you've gotten the full range of motion, and we're using the non-hitting hand to take the racket back and behind us and get a way bigger shoulder turn because we have to stay sideways on the one-handed backhand. I tell my students, you gotta get more than sideways to stay sideways. And from here, as the racket releases from the slot, the arm straightens out, okay? Levers for leverage and at contact point, a huge thing that a lot of people miss is keeping the racket head up. Notice how he's not actually rolling his wrist, okay? The wrist is actually in the same position that it was. Let's take this back right here, okay? The racket head cannot fall below the handle if you want to have a one-handed backhand that is clean and travels on a straight line and has pop because otherwise you're going to get defeated by the ball and you're going to flick it and spray it everywhere. If his wrist was down right now, you see this guy in the back? That guy is going to die, okay? That guy is going to get hit in the ball. That guy is going to get hit in the face with a tennis ball. So you really, really got to keep it up. This is probably the most important thing, keeping that wrist up at contact and through as well. And then we're going to see the rotation of the shoulder. Notice how the strings stay pointing towards the net. A lot of people go on edge way too early, and that's fine. You can still do that for flat backhands, but if you want to get more spin on your one-hander, you have to have a wiper finish. Notice how the strings are staying towards the net. He's not rolling the wrist. The wrist stays in the same position, and it's a rotation of this shoulder over here. The arm is a lever. I hope you learned some things from this video that you can implement in your own game. And uh, I think that uh, Mortoglu has great strokes and he's a great coach. Uh, in any event, thanks for tuning in and use what you've learned to modernize your game. The online course is now open. Click the link down below to get started. On April 30th at 11.59 p.m., the group goes private so if you would like to enroll, sign up before then because after you won't be able to get the lessons.